Okay, today we are changing out the timing belt on a 2002 Honda Civic. The first step is to jack the car up and get the tire off. Okay, next step is we got to start taking off the drive belts. In order to do that, we got to remove this and we got to remove this. And um, let's see, I'm trying to think. There's a bolt down there, there's a bolt up here. And we can just set it off to the back of the engine there. Okay, the next step is we have to remove the alternator. Now, there is a bolt on the top, right about in here. And then there is a uh, tensioner down there, and there is a bolt right next to the tensioner. Okay, after a bit of fidgeting, we finally have the alternator out. Okay, so the next step, we now have to remove the motor mount. Okay, so now we're taking off the motor mount. I've already got the engine supported with the jack and a piece of 2 by uh, 10 material. So I've already broke these loose, so now we just got to finish taking off the motor mount. The next step is we need to remove the valve cover. So you turn these things 90 degrees, pop that off. Next step is we take out these two bolts to get our rail loose. Okay, next I've loosened all of these, so they're ready to come off. And I've loosened these, so they're ready to come off. At this point, I might as well take the wires off the alternator because I'm going to have to pull all of this through to get it out of the way to get the valve cover off. So, first step, push down on this and pull this plug out. Okay, with the alternator removed, now it's time to start removing all of this. So we have to pull every single connection off of the uh, spark plugs. Let's see. There's a little clip right back here that if you jam a screwdriver in here, you can pop that loose. There's also a little connector on this end that you might want to grab and pop loose. And just set it off to the side. Okay, I've loosened all of the valve cover bolts and I've also loosened all of the um, high voltage units. And I pried this hose off the back with a couple of screwdrivers. I've decided to remove the air cleaner because on the back side of the valve cover is this metal bracket down in there and it just has two little screws holding it in. Yep, I think it'll come out now. There we go. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but down there on the pulley there is three little marks on the left and one mark on the right that lines right up with that little V in the point. That means the engine is now at top dead center. It's time to remove the uh, crankshaft position sensor which is supposedly located right underneath this grommet. Next step we got to remove the upper timing belt cover. It has a bolt right here, down here, and over here. Okay the next step was to take off the crankshaft pulley which involved putting a chain wrench around the pulley to hold the pulley still because you don't want it moving and messing up your timing and then getting a breaker bar with a 19 millimeter to crack this loose. Okay, the next thing we got to take off is this bracket before we can take off the lower timing belt cover. Now there's two bolts directly beneath here. Wrap around, there's two more on this side, and I found another one clear over on the end underneath the heat shield for the exhaust. We've gotten the lower cover off. You've got, what, one, two bolts over here, another bolt here, and another one here. But you can see this has been busted up, and I've got a new one waiting to go on. We had to remove the crankshaft position sensor. Now, this is located down by the pointy sprocket on the bottom, and it only has one bolt holding it on and one electrical connector. Okay, the next step involves loosening the bolt on the tensioner pulley. To get the belt off, I went ahead and uh, removed the spring that was holding the idler pulley tight, and that made the belt removal rather easy. And it's always a good idea to replace your tensioner pulley with a new one. I plan to replace the seal on the end of the camshaft here so in order to do that I need to remove the pulley and to remove the pulley we want to make sure that it doesn't rotate as we're trying to take the bolt off so you want to jam a screwdriver somewhere to prevent it from rotating. Before you remove this pulley it's a good idea to put a mark somewhere to let you know where to line it back up. Here's a quick tip to get the seal out I just got one of these paint can openers, wedged it underneath, and now I'm just pulling on it. The seal was kind of trapped behind this plastic piece. It was just a single bolt to get it loose, and I pulled it forward, so now the uh, seal can come out.
Okay, it's always a good idea to take a little bit of oil and put it on your new seal. And now I'm going to use my 32 millimeter socket, which easily fits around the shaft, so that I can uh, tap this in. So the seal has been replaced, and I went ahead and put this bolt back in to keep this cover on. Now it is time to put this pulley back on and it is keyed so it only goes on one way so we just have to find that there it is and the bolt needs to be torqued to 27 foot-pounds now it's time to replace the water pump with a new water pump and uh, it appears that it just has four bolts it's always a good idea to go ahead and change your antifreeze if you're intending to change a water pump because you're going to lose a lot of it to the floor anyway the old water pump leaves behind a little bit of uh, blue RTV, so I'm going to have to scrape that away and then clean it up with some acetone. And then clean up this with a little bit of acetone, and then apply some new RTV before I put on the water pump. The water pump, the new one is on, and uh, the four bolts, you put a little bit of RTV around them before you insert them, and you also put RTV around the gasket and uh, these bolts get torqued to 104 inch pounds which is about 12 newton meters it's time to put on the idler pulley and I just noticed this has an up written here and it's open at the bottom so I'm guessing this goes like this the idler pulley is on but not tight and the spring is not connected yet that way I can go ahead and put this in without much struggle I got the belt in place now it's time to get the spring hooked back up to its post. So I'm just going to use a pair of needle nose and pull it up there. We've temporarily reinstalled the main pulley and then rotated it counterclockwise twice to make sure that the timing marks ended up in the same location. There's an arrow on the block and a little notch on this uh, sprocket here. And the top ended up exactly back where it was with, to begin with so I think everything is in time once again. Nothing got jammed up as I rotated, so I think we're good to go. Now it's time to go ahead and uh, tighten the tensioner pulley bolt and remove the pin. And the torque specification for the idler pulley bolt is 33 foot-pounds. Reinstall the crankshaft position sensor. It's just one bolt. Save yourselves a headache and put this bracket on before you put on either timing belt cover or the lower pulley because this is actually underneath both of the timing belt covers. Now it's time to replace the uh, side engine mount bracket and be sure to put these two bolts in first before you put it in position because there won't be enough room to put them in later. Also same thing with this one that holds I think the alternator. You want to make sure this is in place before putting this on there. Now it's time to put the lower timing belt cover back on and it's just got four bolts. One, two, three, four. Okay, I've reinserted the crankshaft pulley and its bolt needs to be torqued to 181 foot-pounds. Now it's time to put the upper timing belt cover back on. Now you'll notice I have the uh, valve cover back on here. That's only temporary. I need to pull that back a bit to get this to go over top of this. At this point, uh, it would be a good idea to go ahead and connect your uh, crankshaft position sensor and your camshaft position sensor. So if you're like me and you need to replace the valve cover gasket, now that everything is already off of it, it's a good time to do it. Now it is time to replace the alternator. As a uh, misfortune would have it, I broke this lug off of the other one and could not get it apart in order to fix it, so I had to buy a new one. Anyway, we got two bolts to work with. The one that you previously inserted into the um, motor mount and then you have the one that goes down underneath. It has kind of a long top on it. And it's the one that goes through the adjusting wing nut down there. The alternator is reinstalled. I still have yet to tension the belt. So I moved on to the next part. And I put in the two bolts that hold on this whole electrical rail. Next step will be to put on the little caps that go here. Okay, all of the little black cap nuts have been replaced, and I went ahead and put the cover back on. Okay, I've put the power steering pump back in place and tensioned up the new belt. And it's just got one bolt on the bottom and uh, one bolt on the back to tighten it down. 
and I almost forgot to put in my uh, lines here so I had to take these caps back off and put that back on so the next step is put the air cleaner back in the air cleaner is back on and it only had four bolts holding it on one here one over here and one on the back side let's see if we can get the light out of the way okay and uh, there's only one more step before we need to start this or test it and that is to fill the antifreeze because we uh, lost a lot of it but I don't believe I'm gonna start it until tomorrow so that uh, any of the RTV will have time to set the tires back on the car and torqued on so the only thing left to do is to reinstall the negative battery cable and then give the car a test to see if everything works oh yes and I've also filled the uh, antifreeze Now, at this point, I'm just going to keep an eye on the antifreeze because as it sucks in more antifreeze, I'll probably have to keep talking it off. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful.